Hey, what's up everybody? Potato here, bringing you the first ever Game Review Time with Potato About Games and Stuff. Okay, so I'm still working on the title, but trust me, once I do, it'll be amazing. Anyways, let's get back on topic. I just got done playing through a game called Singularity, which came out last June, and I don't believe got enough credit for how amazing it is. The game is basically an alternate take on historical events back during the Cold War when Stalin and the Russian scientists discover a brand new element on some retarded island called Katorga 12. The entire place is covered in Russian propaganda, but the old school feel puts me right back into Bioshock, while the creatures put me right back into Dead Space. Perhaps the two should get together and make Biospace, the 1950s game of scary magic and old stuff. There are three main people in the game. This dude, that guy, and this chick. Now this guy is apparently the king of Russia, otherwise known as Demachev for Demachev, and is a total douche. This guy is a buzzkill and looks like he would fit in really well with any random scientist from the N64 game Goldeneye. This girl makes my underparts tingle like the first time I met Alex from Half-Life 2. You guys may have remembered her. I think it could be her... assets. Or perhaps how great she plays a supporting role. Who knows. When I'm not trying to stick my minigun in Catherine's face, or trying to figure out how to write my novel... I spent a lot of time fixing massive objects that have broken down over time, and busting skulls open with some familiar and some unique guns. The main plot is centered around the device called the TMD, or the Time Manipulation Device, which I'm sure you're all smart enough to have figured out by now, Ben's time and shit. Dimitrov is trying to obtain the TMD, but the shit is welded on your arm so he can go suck a dick. You fight about as many monsters as soldiers in the game, and even find them fighting each other on occasion. It only took me about 5-6 to six hours to beat the game, but I enjoyed it the entire time. The gameplay starts strong, and continues to hold its own all the way until the end. Having control of the TMD provides you with a ton of ways to approach fights. I found myself using the deadlock to evade bullets and tip the scales into my favor by slowing down all nearby enemies. Pointing the TMD towards an enemy can send his body aging a thousand years in mere seconds, or if you're feeling really fancy, you can revert them back into monsters, who will fight on your side until he kills everybody else. Tossing some E99 juice into baddies that teleport and run around like a kid who just found all 151 original Pokemon will slow them down to pump hundreds of bullets into their brains. The boss battles are short and misleading. I found I had a harder time avoiding the stupid little ticks than the amount of damage I took from messing up during boss battles. I fell in love with the minigun just about the instant that I came across it. It was the first and only gun I upgraded completely. Once you max this baby out, it's hard to find an opponent who won't quickly get destroyed by 600 rounds straight into their eye. The other gun I always had fun with was the Seeker. It's an E99 infused prototype gun where you can guide the bullet around with your joystick. After the first dozen kills with it, I started getting creative, shooting people's legs off, flying around objects, or seeing how close I can get without killing them. Fortunately for us, the hitboxes are fairly forgiving. I only played the multiplayer for a bit before I got frustrated enough to rage quit. Your movements just don't flow as well as they did in the campaign. The part I did like about it is that you can play as one of the little ticks and take over people's minds by stabbing them in the face with your tiny little legs. After controlling one of the soldiers, I started having a lot more fun since no one suspects you to be an enemy, so you could just walk right up to him and shoot him in the face. All in all, I really love playing this game, and I'm giving it a very solid 8 out of 10. If the multiplayer was better, and if there was more replayability to the game, it would get a perfect score for me. I would say that the single player is definitely worth playing, although it would be hard to accept a $60 price tag. Gamefly sells it for 18 bucks used, and that's a steal in my book. Hope you all enjoyed my very first review. Leave a comment down below of what you like, what you hate, or even if you'd like my opinion on another game. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tune in for my next video.